cruise ships are floating cities, and as such, they're equipped with state-of-the-art medical facilities. The medical department on board the Celebrity Edge is currently staffed by two doctors, three nurses, and a medical secretary. The medical facility is located on deck number two, just off what we call the I-95, or main crew thoroughfare, with normal hours of operation, although a doctor and nurse are always on call 24-7 while rotating their days off. A reception area is in the center of the medical facility with separate designated waiting rooms for guests and crew. Nurses perform initial evaluations of patients in the triage room between the waiting areas. Here's a triage tidbit. The nurse on duty has a triage bag with them at all times, which they've nicknamed Tracy or Thomas, the triage bag. Two doctor's rooms or offices are for consultations and examinations. And to be a ship's doctor, you'll need at least five years clinical experience with varying backgrounds, for example, in family medicine, internist, surgery, orthopedic, and general practice, just to give you an idea. The senior doctor position on board requires a minimum of two years shipboard experience, so they have the understanding of the operations while at sea. The idea is to have someone that's versatile and knows the different issues encountered on a broader spectrum rather than having a doctor with a specific expertise like a cardiologist. On top of the diagnosis and treatment of guests and crew, shipboard doctors and nurses facilitate crew wellness programs designed to protect the crew, vaccinations, and blood pressure while continuously practicing and participating in emergency drills and training. Nurses require at least three years in the ICU or ER, and all medical personnel must have basic and advanced trauma and pediatric life support, continuous education, and depending on where they're from, a license renewal every one to five years. Directly off the waiting rooms is the ICU, which is equipped with the latest in medical gear, from ventilators and oxygen, to assist for critical cases, for example, a heart attack or if someone requires to be intubated. We would not treat an invasive procedure. They would be sent out shoreside on a referral for surgery and it greatly depends on the severity of the situation. The ER is for fractures with mobile digital x-ray machine that we can utilize in the emergency room or move it to the ICU. The pharmacy is stocked with antibiotics and medications and over-the-counter items. If we don't happen to have something on hand, we do have the ability to order medication from the ports of call. The lab is where all the tests are completed and something that I found strangely interesting was the silver box on the bulkhead. I couldn't help but think when I saw it, if you need to collect a specimen, well, you're in luck. Three separate wards, including an isolation room, are used for examinations, observation, and dialysis at sea. Each is equipped with TVs, private bathrooms, and oxygen. Up to 10 patients can be accommodated at one time if we utilize all the areas in the medical facility. Anything above 10 would be classified as a mass casualty situation, and we have a dedicated backup location depending on the circumstances. Stretchers and baskets are at the end of the corridor, and it's worth mentioning that the stretcher team is made up of crew members from various departments, for example, housekeeping, security, and restaurants, who are trained to respond and assist the medical team. Ironically, the final stop on our tour is the morgue, which is essentially a refrigerated compartment with three, how shall I say it, beds. I'm sure we all know what a morgue is designed for, but it's one of those areas that most people request and are dying to see. There is a difference between medical on ships versus on land. On land, when you go to the doctor, they can directly refer you to specialists. On ships, the medical team is on their own to evaluate, diagnose, stabilize, and care for the patients on board. The last resort is a medical evacuation, which can be performed while the ship is at sea. Medical evacuations are usually with helicopters or air ambulances via the ship's helipad, with some helipads large enough for a helicopter to land and others that are smaller and require a hovering technique like you see here. The helipad is prepared by our deck team who folds down the railings and radar masts. They secure any loose items and fire teams are on the standby as precaution. The first step in an evacuation is communication between the shipboard doctor, the shoreside medical team, and depending on where we are, the Coast Guard to assess the urgency. 
It's worth noting that an air evacuation is quite stressful on a patient, so if there is the option to stabilize them on board until we reach the next port of call, we prefer to do that. The ship's doctor and the captain will have a conversation based on the ship's location. For example, how quickly can we get to the next port of call by speeding up to determine if an air evacuation is required. If the patient can be comfortably stabilized, we will most likely put on all engines and go full speed to the closest port. I have seen my fair share of medical situations in my 24 years at sea, and one thing that brings me great comfort is knowing that if I get sick at sea, we don't just have great facilities, we have great people, and I'm always in good hands. And that's how I see it.